You're watching Nerdy Show's coverage of Nerdapalooza 2013. That was Nerf Herder playing every last song possible. They are the droids you're looking for. Did you like that, Cap? I did like it. That was a gr- uh, it was really it was what we needed very much. Like it's been a very heavy afternoon, and that was light and fun and good. And uh, I'm excited to see Soliloquous of Sound next. Um, that's coming up probably yeah. Uh, that's coming up probably pretty pretty soon. Uh, but uh, obviously, you're gonna hang out with Cap from Nerdy Show and Mark from well, Mark with a C, uh, who's also got a show on the Nerdy Show Network. But you know, he's That's Mark right. with a C first and foremost. Well, you know, I, I host the Real Congregation, and I'm the general manager of Nerdy FM, a 24/7 online radio station. Nothing but nerdy music all the time. But before we go any further, we've got to say hello to everybody watching in Chile. Yeah, Chile, viva! <laughs> We have tons of people watching. We're looking at our numbers, and you guys are like, it's the USA and then Chile by a landslide. So, uh, how did that happen? I don't know. I have no idea how that happened, but that's cool. Uh, feel free to let us know how that happened, and we'll copy and paste it into Google Translate. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Of course, if there's anything you want us to address, if there's any issues, we've got the chat room going. You can see that right in front of you at nerdyshowlive.com. Um, and later, we're going to archive a bunch of this stuff and have it available on our Nerdy Show Live YouTube channel, which is going to be youtube.com slash user slash Nerdy Show Live. If you search Nerdapalooza 2013 and Nerdy Show, you're going to find it. But uh, I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, subscribe and like. And then, hey, we can bring you more cool Nerdy Live events, hopefully in the future. And don't forget to check out Nerdy Show Live. We put up the pilot of that show itself. And uh, we've actually had a monitor over to my left and your right. I think that's how that works. But you won't see it, so whatever. <laughs> but, nerdy, yeah, Nerdy Show Live is a, a program we did, kind of like a, a, a very strange talk show 90s um, live-action Nickelodeon amalgam, sort of. Kind of like that thing that happened with P. Lander Z earlier, if you yeah. caught that, but um, uh, but sort of stretched out over <laughs> over over an hour or so. Uh, oh, yo, Mark, you got a story. I'll try to tell the story, but I know soliloquous of sound will start. As, okay. Running backwards, I'll try to shorten this up. John, uh, one of the Johns from They Might Be Giants last night was actually out signing an autograph. There was a security agent right next to them named Louis, or Lewis, I believe it's Lewis, and there's apparently a, a sort of crazy cat lady looking person that's trying to get the, the John's attention, and he's not having it, and uh, all of a sudden he hears over the walkie, Lewis, we need you backstage. He goes, copy. And the girl, the, the crazy cat lady, the older lady, goes, Lewis? Lewis? Oh my god, I never thought I'd see you again. Here, you be Lewis. And you're petrified by this. <gasps> Lewis, don't tell me you don't remember me. Lu- I never thought I... It's been so long. Lewis, it's me. Who are you? I just heard your name over the walkie. I'm messing with you. So John, <laughs> one of the Johns from They Might Be Giants had to rush in and go, No, it's cool, Lewis. I got this. Oh my god. <laughs> the crazy cat lady did that? Yeah, she just trolled him. How wonderful Man. is that? Props to that lady. The internet's really taken off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, like, how long has she been waiting to pull that one off? It's like, she, like based on your, your um, sto- version of the story you're telling, it sounds like this lady has been waiting maybe years and years to do that somehow to somebody. Like, she was just ready to execute. I, you know, hats off to her. Normally, I'm not a big fan of anything that can be considered trolling. I like a good prank, right. uh, something in good spirits, but not actual trolling. But in that case, you know what? Apparently, um, some staff members were around her and started a slow clap afterwards. <laughs> um, one of them being the, uh, uh, the, the girlfriend of uh, Josh the one of the organizers and drummer for Random Encounters. So we have a verifiable source that watched this take place. This happened. This really happened. A, a crazy cat lady trolled a security guard of They Might Be Giants, and it was super weird. Yeah. And a member of They Might Be Giants had to go. No, it's cool. No, come back here, Lewis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he saved the day. The shoe was on the other foot last night. So, uh, hey, I don't know if you saw, but during Nerf Herder's set, Doctor Vern from Cyfried rushed the stage just to hug the lead singer. I missed that. That's awesome. It was wonderful. There's so much love in this room. And he uh, interrupted the song and was like, there's so much love here. You guys saw that at home, of course. But if you didn't know who that was, rushing the stage in the bowling jersey, that was Dr. Vern of Seifried, who was also one of the puppets in the green jelly set. And also uh, wearing the Frankenstein head was KSV from Seifried. Yeah, and also um, the Runaway Five were those box creatures uh, on uh, the green jelly stage. 
you actually, if you just watched Green Jelly or what we were able to air of it before we had to cut over to MC oh, Lars. We aired a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know when that executive decision was made, so. We only lost like five minutes. We only lost five minutes? Okay. Well, either way, you basically saw most of Nerdapalooza on the stage right there dancing behind Green Jelly. Are you familiar with Green Jelly besides this festival? Uh, I'm familiar that they, they did the uh, score for Maximum Carnage on the Super Nintendo. Wow, that's way more obscure than my knowledge of them. I, I know this because, uh, you know, that, that's a very uncommon thing, especially in that generation of game, to, uh, to do something like that. And uh, I don't know how it happened. I don't really know the context, but I know that on every single cart, every single ad, there's a little squirt of green in the corner that says, Music by Green Jelly. <laughs> Who knew? I knew they did the one record. Hold on, hold on. Okay, there's a chance that's wrong. If there's a band called Mint Jelly, it could have been them. But I don't know what the chances are. Certainly they were both operating at the same time. Well, what if it was a band on the Minty Fresh record label, and now we're just connecting the dots in some meta-cerebral way, Cap? What if the Super Nintendo never existed? I think that's true. It's at least true of Maximum Carnage the Game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, we can, we can rewrite all the history we want about that. I'm right. It was mint jelly. No, it was green jelly. It was green jelly. Our fact they, checking cuz. They actually did that. And how weird is that, that? That that cacophony on stage, it was more of an experience than a music concert, actually composed a bunch of, well, basically rage music to beat up uh, similar goons in different colored outfits, too, with some symbiotes involved. But, you know. I'm hearing Nerf Herder sucks from over there. That's not cool. That's not cool. That's we can't cool. stand for that. I happen to think otherwise. Say, uh, out of the second half of the day, who's been your favorite so far? Like, your absolute favorite? Where are you dividing the halfway point? <laughs> I don't know. Let's say since I was here last. Oh, boy. Uh, I, well, I wasn't here when you were here last, so... Uh, uh, um, uh, does does P. Lander Z fit in that, that second half of the day? No, cool. no. That's what you answered last time I was here. So after oh, P. Lander Z... was there. Oh, my God. Sorry. It's been, it's been a blur, guys. It's been a blur. Uh... Oh, jeez. Um, I mean, Lars was great. Uh, was Deathlehem? Had Deathlehem played by then? De Deathlehem's... Uh, Green Jelly. Green Jelly. Also played themselves. Also played themselves. On the animated, on the animated series Fantastic Four. On the animated series Fantastic Four. In, in, in which the thing, the, the thing, the ever-loving blue-eyed thing, sings his own theme song. It's clobbering time. Now, I watched that show, but I don't remember that at all. What the hell? What? How, how? They must have been. Where are they from, Mark? Do you know where they're from? I, I would have to imagine that they at least were centered in Los Angeles due to the Tool connection, the IBM connection, and the E Studios connection. Okay, I'm like, no, there's, there's two options here about how this is possible. They had so many weird Marvel connections during the mid 90s. Uh, one would be if they were in New York City and they were like friends with Marvel, who's based out of New York City. Uh, or. I believe there was a Los Angeles office at that point in time negotiating all those like animation contracts and everything they had. That must be it. I don't, because otherwise, that's crazy. Like, they knew somebody there. They had the best luck, and it's so strange because they're um, the most in intentionally not good band. But yeah, after P. Lander Z, you said uh, Lars was your highlight. I didn't get to see any of Lars, but I saw on the. Uh, the screen that he was setting up a drummer. Did he play with a full band? Tell me, I missed it. Okay, he played with it. He played with a drummer. I didn't. See, I didn't. See, and I didn't get to see the whole show, so I'm sure that everybody else knows better. Uh, but he, he played with a drummer. He had. He was. He was mixing some things up on the laptop. So live drummer, which is always nice for a hip hop show. Uh, he did. A, he did a number with Mega Ran, um, and uh, there, he was doing a lot of his uh, literature uh, rap. So that was, you know, great. You know, most of most of his literature rap is on the, the newer side of uh, of Lars and stuff so it was I don't it's been a while since I've seen him it was really good to see that stuff yeah and of course if you were watching on the stream on Friday night you got to see a surprise MC Lars appearance during Mega Ran's set where they did a track about flowers for Algernon and you want to talk nerdy you can't get nerdier than a hip-hop track with Mega Ran and MC Lars about flowers for Algernon now there's nothing left there's basically um, you know you could get real nerdy about the ingredients of Roll Aids maybe Maybe that's left, and you know what hasn't been sampled yet in nerdcore. I, I don't know, but you could probably. I mean, if you can figure out which like uh, theorem, like mathematical theorem, actually has like a rhyme scheme to the pronunciation of the numbers, maybe you can work something out there, like and get some real like 
So, you know, there's there's a there's a genre called mathcore, and this isn't it, but some real mathcore. Are you talking like math rock, like the um, you know the sort of proggy guys that are actually having to count the tempos, or is there a totally different math core? There is a totally different math core. I'm not too uh, familiarized with it, but it's it's basically a kind of rock music that has a very kind of uh, 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 geometric sequenced quality to it. There's uh, there's a band whose name I used to know, but it's no one I've ever followed. I've never followed this, but it, it, it was a name that was a pl probably possibly incorrectly or pretentiously applied to a certain group of music at least a couple years ago. Uh, all the acts are still active, I'm sure, but people who use that terminology, I don't know. I'd like to thank Cat Blackard for that very vague description of a genre that may or may not exist. I'm sure you can look it up, and I'm sure Pitchfork has something stupid to say about it. You're being handed a fortune off camera. Ah, uh, this is actually very important. Um, we, got, we got some Chinese food today uh, off-site. Uh, so it didn't give us the runs, and um, because the convention center food is bad, um, and it was a, a remarkable fortune. On the right track means need to run even faster or got run over. <laughs> Slow motion, Mark head explode. I don't know what you just said. What do you take away from it? It has something to do with trains. Um, so you either run faster away from the train or you get, well, run over by the train. It's, it's kind of the, uh, the classic um, uh, Prometheus situation of, uh, damn it, Charlie's their own, just like step to the side so you don't get crushed by the spaceship. Seriously, girl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, actually, um, uh, my daughter got a fortune not too long ago. I have a 14-year-old daughter, and no kidding, the fortune was you were eating a fortune cookie. Now, this was in a box of apparently totally- You were right! <laughs> It was totally serious fortune cookies. Mine was something like, you are the luck that you create in the world, or something. You're going, ah, I can't apply this to anything. You're, you're just crapping these out. You're not even trying. Hers? They were right. Uh, have you ever gotten the one, uh, I know a few people have gotten this, uh, uh, you will have a delicious cake. No, I've never seen that one. Yeah, it's pretty good. It also works really well with the whole in bed thing. In bed with daddy. In bed with daddy? That's, that's vulgar. Oh, here's I'm another. being handed no a fortune. This, this, you cannot top this fortune, though. Let's see. Can I? Can I? Son said, even Popeye didn't eat his spinach until he had oh to. Oh. My. God. <laughs> it's been topped. Daddy. In bed with daddy. <laughs> In bed with daddy. All right. Son, I I've been asked to put an, an, an addendum on this. Son said, even Popeye didn't eat his spinach until he had to. In bed with daddy. <laughs> oh my god. This turned into NeurosisShowLive.com. Thank you very much for tuning in to our deepest, darkest fears being exposed here on camera. If you're just tuning in, Soliloquist of Sound is next, and then the the show ender of all Nerdapalooza, and of course the third day, Power Glove. Um, I'm Cap from Nerdy Show. I'm Mark with a C from Nerdy FM, The Real Congregation, and MarkWithAC.com. We're happy you're tuning in. <laughs> I'm sure we could all stack a lot of a lot of a lot of hats on top of our heads. But let's talk about Nerdy FM real quick. Nerdapalooza is about to wind down. That means that you're going to be devoid of streaming nerdy music. Or is it? Because if you go to nerdy.fm, we actually, we being like people who are uh, very involved with the Nerdapalooza thing here, uh, have a little something that is a 24-7 streaming nerdy music radio station. It's a curated playlist. Uh, it's probably everything you're looking for but don't have in life. Um, it's a... Uh, it's all, like, many of the artists here, many more artists that you could discover, and um, it's 24-7 uh, until Spider-Man's dead. And when we talk nerdy music, what does that mean? Because, you know, there's a lot of genres, but uh, mostly we focus on everything from, you know, geek rock, nerd rock, uh, novelty stuff, so we're talking, like, the dementia side of things, uh, Funny video music. Funny music, of course. Uh, video game rock, video game uh, metal. We got some video game metal in there. We've got some chip tunes, lots of actual stuff made with Game Boys. But if you're watching this stream, you know what we're talking about with that. And uh, also, well, what nerd music stream would be complete without nerdcore? So those are the ones off the top of my head. But there's a lot in the middle. There's some that are just Star Trek metal, like Stavorkar. That's, That's all they are. They uh, it's a, it's a all Klingon death metal, all songs sung in Klingon. <laughs> and uh, we've got the, the Star Trek rock. The Is that called just Trock? <laughs> it could be. It could Trock. Be. Star Trock. Star Trock. <laughs> that sounds like, yeah, we're really rocking about potatoes. 
Uh, it sounds like maybe soliloquist of sound are getting started. Is that a, is that a sound check or what? Nothing's, Nothing's happening. happening. Okay. Soliloquist of Sound, by the way, you might be going, who is that? Well, they're actually some local heroes. They were signed to Anti Records, which is a, a re record label that Tom Waits was on. Um, sure. You know, Anti is a pretty diverse little uh, little group of people, but pretty much anything that comes out on Anti, you can go, that's going to be off the beaten path, and me, as a social outcast, I'm going to enjoy that. And uh, Soliloquist of Sound, you know how I first heard about them? I don't know how you first heard about them. I'm walking through downtown Orlando, and next thing I know, Swamburger sells me a CD on the street. And guess what? He's on stage right now. We're going to go watch. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Woo! Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our live stream from Nerdapalooza 2013 for more awesome performances and artist interviews. And if you like what you saw, click like and subscribe to Nerdy Show's channel. Also, be sure to check out all of our podcast programming over at nerdyshow.com. From comics and video games to science and technology, if it's geeky, we've got you covered.